Mina, Gunbanwa, Jesus Freaking Gamer here. Second Samuel chapter 8. Starting at verse 9, I'm just going to hop right into it. Uh, if you're getting a lot of talking and a lot of Christianity today, I'm going to put out another one of my coming out kinds of conservative Christian videos today. So, no video game footage today, but important stuff nonetheless. Um, not really incredibly entertaining. It's really just a bunch of talking by me. But I still find it important. I still find it essential. And not every day is going to be video games. So... Here's a quick sermon, or quicker than the 30-minute message is going to be, and that's going to be very, very serious, covering some dark territory. Be very careful. Serious trigger warnings going into that one. I'll leave a description in that particular video's link. Um, be careful if you watch that. Uh, it's not for the faint of heart or the weak of stomach. <clears throat> this one's family-friendly. This one's for everybody. Anyone can watch this. <clears throat> Second Samuel chapter 8, verse 9. When Toy king of Hamath heard that David had defeated all the army of Hadadezer, then Toy sent Joram, his son, to King David to greet him and bless him, because he had fought against Hadadezer and defeated him, for Hadadezer had been at war with Toy. And Joram brought with him articles of silver, articles of gold, and articles of bronze. King David also dedicated these to the Lord, along with the silver and gold that he had dedicated from all the nations which he had, which he had subdued. That was good English. From Syria, from Moab, from the people of Ammon, from the Philistines, from Amalek, and from the spoil of Hadadezer, the son of Rehob, king of Zobah. Interesting little thought that came to my mind as I read this. Um... You know, you're getting spoiled from all these nations, and I could be wrong. I'm guessing some of that stuff was probably dedicated to other gods, other deities, maybe even like idols made of bronze, silver, and gold. And part of you may think, you know, well, that stuff you know, was probably destroyed, probably cast away, and it very possibly was. But the thought that crossed my mind, open to interpretation, I don't have something ironclad here. Um, although I could, I could easily reference 1 Corinthians <clears throat> chapter 9, where Paul talks about if you want to walk into um, you know, a, an idol's temple and sit down on one of their feasts, if you thank your God for it, the food, the food is pure. Although all, he also said, uh, he also said particularly in Romans 14, a different book, that if you are doing something that stumbles up your brother or your sister and it offends their conscience, don't do it. And he also brings up the whole um, meat sacrifice to idols thing there. And he's like, well, there may be circumstances where you don't want to do it. Um, but in 1 Corinthians, he very clearly said you could. And he, also, he did also say in Romans 14, for those who are strong of faith and strong of heart and mind, if it doesn't offend you, you know where, who created the food, you know where it actually came from, go for it. And it, it, on that principle, I, I, I saw this verse, and I'm like, you know, who knows where, you know, ha and even if it wasn't necessarily an idol that David had to melt down into a, just the raw gold, silver, and bronze, what if, who knows how those things were obtained? Who knows what those other people went through in order to obtain those things? And of course, some of those came from people that he conquered. So... No idea what the origin was, but as soon as that property went into David's hand, it was the Lord's. It was dedicated to him. Just to bring in this into a modern day example, if someone gave me money that they had won from gambling, I wouldn't reject it. I would take it, and I would use it for whatever purpose I felt the Lord was leading me to do. Even if it was simply putting it in my bank account and it sitting there and it profiting me. If it profits me, it's profiting someone in the kingdom of God. Let me take it a step further. If, if some... Maybe this isn't completely family friendly. Um, of course, I just talked about David, you know, killing off some nations. So that, when you, if you think about it, that's not completely family friendly. If a porn star, an unrepentant porn star, were to, de to, were to g donate some money to me for whatever reason, I have no idea why, since I don't believe in what they do, and I actively preach against that, and I don't agree with that, but if they put money in my hand, it's not illegal in the United States. It's not that they didn't steal the money from anyone. They gave me the money. I wouldn't say, no, your money's not good enough for me. I'd still take it. Because that money, once it comes into my hands, it's the Lord's money. 
Now, if someone robbed a bank and said, you know, we want to bless the kingdom of God, I would say, no, that that money needs to be turned into the bank and you need to be arrested. Um, if it's gained through some means that are illegal, if it's been stolen from someone, that money needs to go back to its original owner. But if that money belongs to the person, if that property belongs to the person and they have legal rights and claims to it and they wish to give it to the church or to me or to some other Christian, at that and that person may be, you know, they're living in some sinful way and maybe the money was gained through a means like you know, gambling or pornography or just something that we Christians would disapprove of. I personally don't have a, thing, a problem against gambling. I don't think it's a sin. But I digress. If that money came into my hands or someone else, someone other Christian's hands, I would personally keep it and I would encourage that Christian to keep it because once we have the money, that money belongs to the Lord. We're going to live our lives and spend our money in a way that we believe honors God. So as soon as that money passes into our hands, that money is dedicated to the Lord. So, a bit of a controversial point. I think what Paul said in his day, in Romans 14 and 1 Corinthians 9, was also equally controversial. It's not a line that everyone's going to agree on. That's why Romans 14 was like, you know, one side feels this way, another side feels this way. For those who are of the opinion that they can eat whatever they want, don't trip up your brothers. For those of you who are of the opinion that you shouldn't eat that meat, don't hate or despise or judge the other Christians who are eating it. You live your life to the Lord and keep an open heart to those who are in disagreement with you. So light up that comment section. Let me know what you think on this. That is what I got from the passage. Once that unholy, ungodly, you know, gold, silver, and bronze passed into David's hands, he dedicated it to the Lord. He didn't say, no, I'm not taking your stuff. No, that's some bad stuff. No, he kept it. And it became the Lord's property. So thank you guys very much for watching this video. I love you. And God bless.